listening to Radio Marine Air Christian Boys in your home. We're now presenting the show, Find Something More, Find Your Way Home, with Kendra and Christine. Oh my gosh, Christine, your book rocked my world. I heard someone speak about the illumination of conscience about a year ago. It was the first time I even heard of it. And I wasn't exactly sure, even after the person spoke about it for like 40, 45 minutes to an hour, what it really was about. So when I read your book, it is the most concise package of all of the people who have prophesied about the illumination of conscience and also all of the people who have experienced an illumination of conscience before the world experiences it. So before we get into what it is, I really want to hear how did you begin to write this? Because at the end of it all, you were hearing it from God and you heard, do it now, right? And I think that's what you heard. At least we stop our conversations for the world. We stop it and we say, let's talk about it on air. Mm -hmm. So I remember you saying that you heard God saying you need to get this out there and tell, tell the world a little bit about how you came to write this and what God told you to do. Well, when I first heard about it, I, I got the sense from God that I should write a book on it, but I was reluctant, uh, partly because writing a book is no small task. It's, right. It has, for me anyway, it, it's not something I would ever do in my spare time. I only write because God tells me to. And for this, I always do a lot of checks and balances to find out, hey, is this really the right thing to do? Is this really what you're asking of me? So when I heard about it, I, I thought, if this is real, this is incredibly significant, incredibly important. The world needs to know this. But Lord, I'm not willing to put myself out there. I'm not willing to do all this work if it's not. So what happened was I said, God, if you want me to do this, I feel like I will need to meet or learn of people who've already been through an actual illumination of their consciences. I need to, and they need to be willing to share with me their intimate details of their stories. And lo and behold, within eight weeks, I kid you not, I met in person, five people who had been through an illumination of conscience against their will and suddenly... And then I learned of five others who also ended up in the book. And that was eight years ago. And I haven't, n that never happened since. And so, okay, for those people who are like, illumination of conscience, what is she talking about? So use like the most layman terms and, you know, something that's going to connect to somebody who isn't connected with God, who has no idea what their sinful life has done to the world. So... First of all, Christians, Protestant Christians, Catholic Christian, any Christian is aware of the word sin and hopefully knows at least somewhat what that means. I think people outside of religion might think of sin as simply being told by a non-loving God that you're bad. And it's really not that. It's God is loving and merciful and we choose to sin, God never wills that for us. But what sin is, is it's a missing the mark. It's a hardening of the heart. It's a turning away from one's purpose. It's refusing to do the good that you are actually called to, and you know you're called to do it, but you just say no. Or it's in your conscience when you know you're not supposed to do something and you override your conscience and you do it anyway. Those kinds of things are sin. So, what God wants to do is correct the conscience of the world. And what I'll describe first is some, one of the people that God had me meet who experienced this sudden illumination of conscience against his will. And he was a huge sinner. Uh, the people in the book, some of them believed before this happened in God. Some of them didn't. Some of them were older. Some of them were younger. They had no idea that this could happen to someone before it happened to them. And suddenly, Rick, he wasn't Father Rick yet. He was Rick, the womanizer, the materialistic guy who loved his 40-foot yacht and his money and his drug selling and his partying. And he was 
walking outside St. James Church in Medjugorje, and suddenly he wasn't present to the world anymore. He was simply present to a life review. He said he sensed God behind him with his merciful love, holding him and embracing him the entire time. But he began to see each and every one of his sins, beginning with when he was about five years old and stole a matchbox car. That was the first sin he saw. And not only did he see all his sins, but the consequences of those sins, things we never think about. What's a little car? What harm is it going to do? Well, what that means is that the owner has to pay for insurance, knows that people will steal from his or her store, and the insurance companies have to form in order to prepare for theft, and a little more, a little less trust in one's fellow human being erodes other people's hearts, and so on, and so on. So he saw the repercussions God showed him of one matchbox car and how that really hurt God's heart because God the Father would have gladly given him a car God, and had given him parents who would have given him a matchbox car had he asked for it. So there was just no need for him to take it. And that was the beginning and he didn't repent and so it left a wound in him of sin and opening for him to sin again or steal again or bend the rules again. And that slipped in a, into a slope of drugs and not praying and not caring about his mom's opinion and womanizing and really just all about building up his own ego over time to the point where he said he saw how his conscience was eroded to the point that his rationalizations of his own sin became truth. And sin is, as I mentioned, not just what we do that we shouldn't have done, but what we don't do that we should have done. Sins of commission and sins of omission, respectively. And so he is crying and crying and crying, saying, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, as he sees the woman he slept with who ends up having an abortion, as he sees the guy he sold drugs to, who he finds out was holding his whole family together. And he learns that the man committed suicide and that that mm. destroyed his family. And those destroyed people in turn hurt other people in turn hurt other people in turn hurt other people and so on and so on and so on. And he had no idea before this experience how connected all of humanity is to one another. We are truly connected in in ways we can't even understand. Something I do today could affect someone in Madagascar. Mm -hmm. And so even the sins we do in private are not private because God sees all. And so he gets through this and he said, had I not had God holding me up, I think I would have died from the emotional intensity of the experience. So for those of you who are joining us, you have just joined Radio Maria dot US online and it's the Radio Maria show with Kendra and Christine, find something more, find your way home. We are talking about the illumination of conscience. You were just speaking of Father Rick Wendell, who is now a priest, who lived not such a priestly life. And after he experienced his own individual um, illumination of conscience, obviously changed his life and became a holy man of the church and a priest. And I guess I want to take a step back because I was just curious myself, selfishly, and as, as I'm sure everybody else is. Yeah, who... God will show you that in your illumination of conscience, how you selfishly hijack the show. <laughs> and I, how I, much I pain like, it caused the audience. I'm not going gonna, I'm not gonna <laughs> to actually see how I did wrong. And I think, honestly, as much as it's going to pain me, it's going to be awesome to be especially now that I'm at the place where I am in my journey to look back and think how I impacted people's lives and the world and, and driving people to darkness. And I think that that's what it's all about. So I, I want to take a little bit of a step back and say, okay, let's generically talk about what is the illumination of conscience in terms of what the whole world is going to experience. And then we'll kind of go from there because I have other questions that I'll ask, but I think people are still maybe a little bit confused. I on don't blame them. Yes. What is so yeah, it's all in this book. book. Okay, ready, ready, folks. Um, yep. It's called The Warning, 
Testimonies and Prophecies of the Illumination of Conscience. It is endorsed by Dr. Mark Miravalle, by Mark Mallet, by Monsignor Ralph Chifo, by Father John Struzzo, and it has a foreword, which I'd like to read later, by the former bishop to the Queen of England, who firmly believes in all this, who said he couldn't put the book down. And so within the book, I've chosen prophets who, up to the present day, who are very authentic, and most of them with full approval of the church. None of them have been condemned by the church whatsoever. And so that you know that I'm not completely crazy, I'm sure that some of you out there are slapping the crazy label on me right now, and that's okay. I would too. <laughs> well, I read it, and I don't think she's crazy. As oh, a matter of fact, it you. was honestly enlightening and um, eye-opening. Because I, like I said, a year ago heard about it. And you compiled, I'm just going to interject, this comprehensive book of the prophets and stories to help us understand what this is all about and what we should expect. So right back at you. And this, there's a great trailer, a book trailer, a short clip. Kendra can speak to it as well on the Illumination of Conscience, also called The Warning. It has many different names, but if you go to www.queenofpeacemedia, you can get The Warning book there, through there, and you can also see the video. It's also available on Amazon. So go to Amazon or queenofpeacemedia.com, watch the trailer, enjoy that. He does such a good job. Father Blount, an exorcist, speaks about it. And he just does a stunning job, and it explains it. If still after this show, you're not sure what it is, get the book. Yeah. The warning. Oh, warning. Testimonies and Prophecies of the Illumination of Conscience. So, so that you understand that I'm not completely out of my mind, the first section of the book describes the warning, also called the mini-judgment, the pre-judgment, the great day of light, the new Pentecost. It's been given many different names by heaven really speaking to these saints and these mystics uh these come the words about the warning i.e the illumination of conscience come from a bunch of impressive spiritual heavyweights including Mm. the gospel the gospel of matthew chapter 24 uh to canonize pope saint post saint pope pius the ninth and saint pope paul the sixth a priest and martyr, St. Edmund Campion, a nun mystic and apostle of divine mercy, St. Faustina Kowalska, a lay mystic and victim soul, blessed Anna Maria Taiji, a religious superior mystic and exorcist approved by his bishop, Father Michelle Rodrigue, a victim soul and founder of the Flame of Love Movement in the Universal Church, Elizabeth Kindleman, a priest locutionist and founder of the Marian Movement of Priests, Father Stefano Gobi, a modern-day lay evangelist with a far-reaching Catholic apostolate, Matthew Kelly, a mystic and stigmatist who has received messages with the churches in Permater, Luz de Maria de Bonilla, a modern-day stigmatist and visionary supported by our Bishop Janie Garza, and Jesus Christ and the Mother of God herself through their child visionaries in the 20th century apparition sites of He, Germany, and Garbanon. Spain. So wow. all of that is to say this isn't Christine Watkins idea. <laughs> <laughs> remove Amen, me, girl, remove me from the equation, please. Mm-hmm. Okay, now I will describe and and there that list is not exhaustive. Uh, right. That list is not exhaustive. And this is also in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 24. The sun will not shine, the stars will lose their light, the moon will go dark, and it will appear like two heavenly bodies collide in the sky, leaving behind an illuminated crucifix with Jesus on it, not in his crucified form, but in his exalted, glorified form. And through the holes, through his wounds, in his hands and feet and side, rays of light will come upon the earth, lighting it up and night will be brighter than day day will be brighter than day and these rays of light will pierce every soul on earth no matter how old no matter what religion or lack of religion and everything will freeze in a moment halting everything if you don't think god can stop a plane in midair (laughs) that god that plane is not going to outrun god everyone will stop All will stand still and everyone will be in their own world experiencing a life review. 
quite similar to what happens with all of us at death. We all experience a particular judgment. We can be in denial about it. We can say it won't happen, but that won't prevent it from happening. Hence, it's a great motivation to live life with no regrets, to live life with a pure heart. So we will all see our sins and the consequence of those sins. It will last only 5 to 15 minutes in earthly time, but we will not experience it that way. We'll, we will all have an entirely unique experience of ourselves. We will know that there's a God. We will know what sin is. And you hear so many people today say, well, I need proof that there's a God. I never, God won't show me that he's real. Well, I didn't know that was a sin. I was definitely that way. I'd say, I didn't know that was a sin. I didn't know. Me I didn't too. know. Me too. Yeah. No one told me. Da, da, da. Well, well, we will know. And what's interesting, and so much of it is fascinating, but I thought, okay, God keeps saying soon, sooner, sooner, sooner throughout right. time. Right? Did you notice how the prophecies yeah. get? Soon, soon. Soon, soon. And then soon, Even on really trailer, soon. Soon. Like, soon. I'm praying. I hope it happens in my lifetime. Well, I think that will be granted. And the reason why I can say that with such assuredness is that there's uh, two mystics who I who have the churches in Pramada, who have their recognition and their support. One of them is Lusta Maria de Bonilla, and she is still receiving constant messages from the Lord. She's in the book, The Warning. And it was only, it was in March of 2013 that the Lord or the Blessed Mother said that it would happen very, very soon to get prepared and then four months ago, when was that, July, said St. Michael the Archangel spoke to her and said, this is the generation that will experience the great act of divine mercy, the warning. She's not the only one. Father Michelle Rodrigue, the exorcist and mystic, who is like a Padre Pio figure, God the Father spoke to him at the age of three. He didn't know that other people weren't having that kind of conversation. And he was told the same thing that it will be this generation and not only that he is currently speaking he's going to have to stop because god had him found a new order of the church the apostolic fraternity of saint joseph benedict Lebray in amos quebec canada so he'll be doing that work and and not traveling around speaking but for the last three years or so god has had him speak to various places in the U.S. and Canada to say get you are you are going to live through this and be prepared to bring many souls into the church immediately afterwards and he's one of the only ones who's been told well that's not true quite a few Matthew Kelly is, has been told what happens afterwards Lusta Maria Domania is being told what's happened afterwards and all of them concur there's many others in the book and they say the same thing that unfortunately most people will not turn to the good. Many will, many will. You will see there'll be a period of about two and a half weeks or so when Satan is at bay, kept at bay, and this would have to be so because how could someone make a totally free will choice for God if they're constantly bombarded by their old temptations of doubt and such? Two and a half weeks, they have a complete free will to make a choice for Jesus or not. And if you make a choice for him, you become holier and holier. If you make a choice against him, then you become darker and darker. And that is what's going to happen. And those who are dark will persecute what's known as the elect, those who have elected for God, chosen by God, who also choose God in return. And so... It's uh, biblical. We are headed into more biblical times. We've been living in biblical times. And uh, for instance, there's prophecy in the Bible, right? We got the 20 prophetic books. We've got the 12 minor prophets. We've got the six major prophets. We've got Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Baruch, Daniel, Ezekiel. Our faith is filled with prophecy. 
And there are 2,500 prophecies in the Bible, about 2,000 of which have already come to pass with stunning accuracy, and 500 are left for the future, and we're moving into some of those. Oh my gosh, this is overwhelming, and I hate to say it, but we are going to take a little break, let you kind of digest this and, and bring this into your soul, because you should ponder over what we have just talked about. And when we come back, we'll continue with the warning, the book itself, but also what we can expect. And honestly, I've told my family and they think I'm nuts. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) And we'll share that on the other side of the break. So um, I'm just going to say thank you for tuning in to Radio Maria. Find something more. Find your way home. We'll be right back. This is the day that the good Lord job, has made. Oh, honey, I love this. Oh, this is the day that job. the Lord has oh, made. You're doing a great no, job. You're doing a great oh, job. And it's okay if you weren't was, listening. That's okay. I was listening to it, but I wasn't hearing it. <laughs> I, was I was hearing it, but not listening to it. God. All right. Yeah. All right. I'll okay. send you the book. Well, you guys are doing a great job, though. You're very sweet. <laughs> you're very sweet. Oh, we're back in 15 seconds. All right. You're listening to Radio Maria, Christian Boys in your home. We're now returning to the show. Find something more. Find your way home with Kendra and Christine. Oh, Luis, I've missed you. Okay, so we are back. And I want to say that this is the most awesome show because I think everybody on the planet needs to not only know what the illumination of conscious is about, but how to spread it to others. And I just, I read the book and I I just blurted it out to my husband, non-practicing husband. He's on a journey. And my two stepchildren who were raised in the Lutheran faith, who have seen me leave my executive career and go off and share the Catholic faith with everyone. And I said, okay, guys, listen, I want to tell you this because I want when it happens that you remember that I told you that this was going to happen and that it's not some sort of technology thing because when I told, I told my husband first, just to get his idea. And he said, and I said, and they're going to say they, meaning the world is going to say it was technology. Yeah. Somehow the fact that we carry the smartphones around with us all over the yes. place, that some greater power came into our mind and did something to us and it wasn't real. And I want to say, I'm going to tell you now so that when it happens, because I firmly believe God is so merciful. He sees how we are all, myself included, heading down that road to destruction, not even knowing that I'm on the road. I had no idea I was on a road of anything other than I thought I was on this road. Like, I am on the road to happiness. I'm on the road to success. I'm on the road to where this world says I'm going to be happy and all of that. And yet, totally wrong when God found me, flipped everything in my life upside down, flipped my reality and my beliefs. So when I told my husband about this, who, God bless him, listens to all of the crazy things that have happened to me, supernatural and all of my transformations, looked at me and said, and so he put in the mind, in my mind, the technology with the smartphones. He goes, Maybe they're going to blame it on the smartphones because everyone has one. And I'm like, dude, rock on. That's a great idea. That's probably where they're going to say, oh, all this stuff came through a smartphone. But when you see Jesus in the sky on a crucifix in his glory with, you know, big, you know, rays of stuff coming down through his wounds. And, you know, so bottom line, I went there with my kids and I said, I just want to tell you this so that when it happens, you know, it's not technology and you know that your, your mom and your wife is not nuts. I mean, this stuff mm-hmm. is real yeah. and I'm not afraid to share it with people who are not on the journey. They're not there. They're yeah. not, no one's going to mass with me. No one's going to church. They're yeah. all doing their worldly things. Yeah. So So talk a little bit about um, 
what you think we need to do in terms of sharing this and maybe even share a few more like real stories with with people like Father Rick that might kind of rain home or whatever you think can help people share this message? Well, I think one of the reasons God had me write the book, The Warning, Testimonies and Prophecies of the Illumination of Conscience, which I will mention again, if you can watch the trailer for it on www.queenofpeacemedia.com, queenofpeacemedia.com, and the book's on Amazon as well, is because it's, it's a hard thing to say to people. It's overwhelming. It, it can sound cuckoo. And the book, however, is extremely convincing. I, I write it in such a way that a skeptic would find it hard to put down. A non-believer would perhaps continue to plow forward because it begins with a rational argument. Even if there is no God, look at the facts of how we came to know about this. You can't just throw away the hypothesis that maybe God does speak to people. You can't just throw that out because the probability of it not happening (laughs) is minuscule. And the probability that all these people who were suddenly taken over by this illumination of conscience who knew nothing about it, much more than the people much more than the the 10 or so in the book, all these people throughout the centuries who knew nothing of one another, who knew nothing of this phenomena in the future, were all told about the same thing at different parts in the world at different times with no common source of reference. Right. What is that? And so the book is very helpful, and it's also very entertaining, I I believe. That's what people have said. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's hard to, like, say that. Oh, gosh, I sound so arrogant yeah to that it is it's hard to put down and it's it's like what what and so you know keep reading you're like what and it's 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 what the reason why it's so important to read it and pass it along after you do get a whole bunch for people for holidays christmas birthdays the reason why it's so important is because the mystics and saints have said that certain people will if you've broken every commandment and you still think you're living in the light you will not survive it you will likely not survive it and even your death will be a grace but people will know during the illumination where they would go were they to die at that moment heaven purgatorial hell and they'll know exactly what they need to do to purify themselves to change and those in hell are living in hell as they are alive. They just are missing the feeling of hell, but they were experienced the feeling and it's horrendous. And so to share this with them is a wake up call to hopefully repent before it happens. Best case scenario, because it's a wake. It's, it's, it's beautiful and alarming at the same time to see one's true self. And, and in the light of, truth we can't help but change we continue to sin only because we're blind only because in some aspect of ourselves and i was just like kendra i had no clue there was such a thing as sin and i had no clue that i was sinning i did know however that i went against my conscience several times amen and i can remember those times very clearly where my guardian angel was screaming at me and i said no Mm -hmm. but What's going to happen is exactly what Kendra said. What's been prophesied is that right at the reason why it's so important for people to read the book, to find out about it ahead of time is because there's going to be massive denial and escape and rationalization afterwards. It was a solar flare. It was technology. All the people on the news, except for a, a select few, are going to brainwash everyone there's going to be a lot of evil trying to collectively dull everyone's conscience again and if you're not strong going into it or if you've never heard about it and you're suddenly hit with that oh my if you at least know this is what Kendra told me about this is that (laughs) crazy book that my aunt Sherry gave to me this is my nutty uncle handed me this book but in that moment 
thank God mm. that you handed them that book because it's so much more likely, number one, that they're going to live through it. Number right. two, that after it happens, they will know what to do. They won't be the ones who go into denial. They'll be the ones who rush. And Father Rodrigue saw this. God the Father showed people rushing to the church. They will need a helping hand. They won't know what hit them. They won't know what to do. We take them by the hand. There'll be long lines of confession. Father Rodrigue said the priest Amen. won't have time for a sandwich or go to bathroom. you got to help them along. And that it will be very hard for priests who are in a state of sin because they won't have time to recollect themselves before they have to minister and do mass baptisms. There'll be a mass influx into the church from all walks of life because people will know. And that will last, he said, around two and a half weeks. And then after that, the devil will come back. He will, um, well, no, he'll still be at bay. The problem after two and a half weeks is people will go back into their old patterns, their old habits, start to doubt. And then after six, six and a half weeks-ish, back to the same old temptations and then people will start making a choice that they don't recover from if they make the wrong one and that's if you love your loved ones which i'm sure you do because you're thinking of them as loved ones if you care about humanity we need to stop caring about what anyone thinks of us can you imagine not giving the book because you don't want their eyes rolling at you and then they're yeah. and I, I i'm gonna be blunt and they're dead Right. And they're dead. That that was the thing that freaked me out the most about the book was that some people won't even live through the illumination they because they're so shocked about they their lives not. and what they've done and yeah. the impact that they've had in the world that they just it's, die. It, they die. And and so can you imagine the the lamentation that we will feel if we learned of this and didn't? mention it and mm -hmm. and i am not trying to make money on this this is important <laughs> <laughs> i mean don't assume oh she's just doing this money making scheme i don't make a dime all of this goes back into you know getting the word out and i i want to read to the audience what um what saint joseph said to the mystic and stigmatist janie garza and in 1994, and all of her writings are approved by a bishop. She's the real deal. And he said to her, For those who believe that they live in the light but continue to break every commandment given by God, these souls, I say, to these souls, they will not be able to see the state of their souls and live. Janie Garza responded to him like most of us would, saying, This is hard for me to know. Are you saying that people who do not live God's commandments will die when they see their souls? St. Joseph answered, Yes, my little one. That's how it will be for many, unless they repent and decide for conversion. There is still time for repentance, but time is growing shorter with each day that goes by. Now, I do want to give encouragement because we need it for those who are walking in God's will, who are striving for holiness, who repent when they notice their sins. There is nothing to fear for those who are walking in God's light. And yay, there is a, one of the many messages has come from a church-approved apparition in Germany where Jesus and the Blessed Mother appeared to four little girls. And when one of those girls grew up four years after the collective apparitions, Jesus was still speaking to her. And her name is uh, Greta Gansforth, and she ended up having the stigmata as well. A lot of these mystics who've been told the elimination also bear the wounds of Christ in their own body. So Jesus said in one of his messages in He, Germany, to Greta, I will make my light shine, a light which for some will be a blessing and for others darkness. Mankind will recognize my love and my power, but do not fear. I am with you. You will rejoice and thank me. Those who await me will have my help, my grace, and my love. So imagine it's not your particular judgment. You're not destined for purgatory, hell, heaven. Well, that would be great. It's not the end of your life. But you let's say you've gone through this. I've gone through this. How do we feel afterwards? 
like Ebenezer Scrooge after going through the night of seeing his life review in light of his sins. We're explosively joyful. We get that second chance with full knowledge. Imagine the heels clicking, the hands clapping. For someone who's lived a holy life, it's, it's, and for someone who's repented of their sins, it's going to be a lot less painful. And yet, I know it's going to be a shock for me. My life was full of sin. It's, it's not going to be a, a gondola ride down a Venetian <laughs> canal. <laughs> I, I have a question because yes. I actually went to lunch and I shared, oh, you got to tune in tonight. And she, she hadn't heard about the illumination of conscience. And I think there are so many out there who haven't. So, and she's a faithful Catholic, one who frequents confession. And I'm just wondering when this comes, because I believe it's going to come. I believe in all of the, the, the popes and the mystics and the lay people who have had this message. And I pray, honestly, I pray that it comes because I think there are so many people in this world that need it. So for, for us who are going to receive this at the same time with the rest of the world, Will we receive it as of our last confession or will it go all the way back to like our birth years where we can't even remember things? From my understanding of how it's described by these saints and popes and these children who, to whom Jesus and Mary have spoken, that we will see all our sins. It's, but the ones mm -hmm. since way, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, I, for those of you who didn't see my face, I'm like, oh. It was no. one lip was curled up way yeah, close to her like, left oh. nostril, yeah. And, but the ones that we've gone and repented of in the sacrament of reconciliation will be experienced differently. But even those will be shown to us because it's one thing to go to confession and say, I'm sorry, I did that. It's another to fully understand and see as God sees what that did to us and others. Yeah. And in seeing that, can you imagine how you'd never want to sin again? Can you imagine how you just want to live in God and breathe in and you love him so much more and you want to help people? It's given this illumination, we can't help but change if we choose to, to love him and be loved by him. The sadness we will feel is if we haven't told people about it and they go, our loved ones go into denial or they did not make it through. So now is the time. Jesus has warned us through Saint Faustina, this is the day of mercy before the day of justice. Take advantage of it. It's time to preach the gospel fearlessly, to share without barriers, and to follow every little prompting of the Spirit that the Lord gives us. He tells us how and when to evangelize. We don't have to worry, but if we clamp up in fear when we know he's saying, speak or give this book or whatever it is, then that is one of the sins of omission that will see the harm we cause by not doing it. Amen. And if you're just joining us, we're on Radio Maria, find something more, find your way home. Kendra and Christine are talking about the illumination of conscience. And I think at the end of it all, when we think about what, what the merciful God is doing, because it's really an act of mercy. It's the greatest He's, act of mercy the world will ever have known. Right. I mean, ever. hey, y'all are going down this dark path. You're going to head into hell. I know. There's a stairway to heaven, which is slow and it's a little bit strenuous. And there's a highway to hell and there it's packed like the Autobahn and you're going as fast as you possibly can. And nobody even knows it. And I think in America, we're probably more geared toward going the fastest that we can down because we law we're spiritually poor and there are many of us who are not, thanks be to God, but those of us who do have that illumination and have been awakened in the eyes of God need to share this illumination of conscience with everybody for one reason only, for when it happens, whether we're alive or not, and if our kids are around or the next generation, 
we can look at them and say, it's not an I told you so moment. It is a try to make yourself better before this moment happens. It's all about preparing yourself for it too. Yes. Um, and and maybe you're shaking up, sh maybe we're shaking up someone's conscience who's watching this, who's like, these women are crazy. Yeah, but and when it's are fine it if you think we're crazy because we're I don't not care. in this for ourselves. Right. <laughs> and I, I, there are two things that the mystics and saints have, uh, many of them have said the same thing about how to prepare. One is go to confession regularly and do a general confession what that means is set up an appointment with the priest and do a life review with the priest of every sin you can remember and and don't don't kill him <laughs> with three don't don't stay in there three hours but succinctly go through it all don't leave anything out and they've also said consecrate yourself to the mother of god and i know i've mentioned this in other shows but this is a consecration that People love, Kendra can speak to it. It's called Mary's Mantle Consecration, a spiritual retreat for heaven's help and uh, for individuals, families, busy people, and parishes. Kendra, do you want to say something? This is the prayer journal that goes. <laughs> oh, it's upside this down. The upside down prayer journal that goes with it. Okay. So, yeah. by the way, the people on the radio, she's showing the books. And these, this consecration, it was funny because I was going to do the um, consecration by, by St. Louis de Montfort. And I chose to do this one for one reason, because I read the first page and it was all about me. It wasn't about learning about Mary and all this other stuff. It was about my virtues and growing in the Holy Spirit gifts and the virtues. And there were days where you would exercise those virtues. And I, you know, some days I failed miserably. And other days I was like, this is the most beautiful. It would have a Bible verse, a saint quote, and then something that you could focus on for that day. And can you imagine as a parish, having everyone in your parish be a part of this consecration and working on the same virtue in the same day and seeing the fruits just floating around your parish from that day forward. I mean, I, I've kept those books and I keep them in my car because sometimes I need to be reminded of some things as I'm going into whatever situation I'm going into. And it's, it's, it's a gift. It truly is. It works on you, but it is hand in hand with Mary and you consecrate yourself on one of her feast days. And it's beautiful, beautiful. And parishes are doing this around the country. So are families, individuals, and couples. And to learn more about that, you can go to www.marys, no apostrophe S, marysmantleconsecration.com mary's mantle consecration.com and for the warning book you can go to queen of peace media.com everything is there and we'd like to bless you and close with a prayer for you listeners we have given a lot of food for thought and some of you are thinking i've got to learn more about this and some of you are thinking i hope i can forget this as soon as possible and i'm not <laughs> going to listen to them anymore <laughs> oh, and I please hope that you don't. I hope you rock your conscience to a point where you are enlightened. Ask God. Ask God. One thing. Ask God to enlighten your mind. Okay. So this is okay. very, very important, please. All right, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, enlighten our minds and our hearts. Lord, you have a great day of mercy planned for the entire world. And Lord, through some of your modern day Mystics, you have let us know that it is in this generation which will come to us like, as you say, a thief in the night out of nowhere. It will happen. And you have always told us, be ready at any moment, every moment that we live. There's nothing, nothing more we can do than moment to moment to live in your love. And Lord, you're letting me know in my heart that People have been left a little fearful, some of them. But perfect love casts out all fear. Remember that this is actually an act of mercy. Imagine if we don't have this. Imagine if we're left to walk in our sin. Imagine if our loved ones are just left to walk in their sin. That is a billion times, an infinite number of times worse 
because we might lose them. We might lose our coworker. We we need this. We need this desperately. Our world doesn't know right from wrong, and it's a global problem right now. And we have the chance for so many people to run into his lap and to to gain heaven. And we can talk about this in a future show, but in the end, Mary's immaculate heart will triumph. And as she prophesied in Fatima, Portugal, when she appeared there, there will be an era of peace, an exquisite time where what we have prayed for for so long, a new heaven and a new earth will come in the Our Father. We've called upon this, that heaven would be on earth, that we would live the same way here, that that the saints and the angels live there. And this is something where the lion lays down with the lamb, as in Isaiah. This is not fake. This is not unreal. This is biblical prophecy coming into our lifetime. We are seeing it now. We are seeing the signs of the time if we are not blind to the evil that is masking people's consciences. And praise God, praise him and thank him that he's coming to awaken us. And you, my dear listeners, will be one of the people that he thanks because you have not hid your light and the light of this illumination under a bushel basket. You have held it up for the world to see and you will be the reason for the salvation of many. God bless you and may you find something more. Find your way home. Hello. Hello. Guess what? I forgot to press uh, go on, uh, for the button to go live. <gasps> I'm kidding. No. You are so bad. You're so bad.